Cheers, Brian. Cheers. So here we are back again with another edition of Right Now with Brian and Drew. However, it's a slightly different Brian and Drew. The other Brian. The other Brian. That's right. Brian here works with me on the customer relationship team here at the Goulet Pen Company, and he is joining us now to talk about a topic that we have yet chatted about. And for good reason, because it's it's a, 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 a sticky wicket. Yes, it's <laughs> so we're going to talk about pen hacks or Franken pens, whatever you want to call them. Because Brian, since I've known you, you have had a what I would refer to as a tinkerer mentality. Oh yeah, and that's been a whole life thing, right? Yeah, I like to do things that make people cringe. So that's um, great. Well, let's yeah. let's let's keep it to pen worthy cringes, please. Yes. <laughs> but like you you uh, you like to mess around with woodworking, leatherworking, you're a very hands-on type of guy. Yeah. So naturally when you first got uh, your hands on a pen, just took it right apart. You had to yeah. you had to destroy, destroy it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. This... Well, what was the first thing you tackled and um, why? Well, I've had this Metropolitan for a long time and as you can see, it started as a silver one but now it's brass. Okay, it also doesn't have a clip and it doesn't have a clip. So that was part of the the uh, the journey of making it into an all brass pen. And I love raw brass. It looks great. Um, so for this one to strip all of the paint off, I needed to take the clip off, which as I found out later, I could not get the clip back on. <laughs> so that was a problem. And then there's a spot here where I wanted to see what was underneath that painting there. So I just took a knife to it and it turns out it's plastic. So. Why um, did you, uh, how did you take the, um, what is it? Is, is it like an anodization on top of the brass or? It's completely painted. So I took, um, uh, a the citrus strip stripping gel and painted the whole thing and it was cool to watch the paint just shrivel up and bubble and then so it like it, 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 it crinkle up like a yep, like a wet straw wrapper per, yeah that well you remember you ever do that thing when you're kids when you take the straw off the off the wrapper off the straw and then you drop water on it kind of like expands like a little snake you never did that no but i'm gonna try it now oh, yeah. um it's a fun third grade thing to do so it crinkles up and you scrape it right off and then you're left with brass. And then you're left with brass. So but, all of them look like this? Uh, yes, all of them look like this. On They're all brass on the inside. And there's two different colors to it. You can see this one's shinier and this one's more matte. Oh, yeah. So they're finished differently. That's they not because of something body. you did. That's actually nope. the... Oh, interesting. That's how they are from the factory. Interesting. Yeah. So that was, the, that was your first expedition in Let Me... Tinker just with this thing. Totally. This is not tinkering. This is beyond tinkering. Oh, I just destroyed it. Yeah. This, is, this is next level. It writes great. Great! That's well, what matters. What was the original color? That was silver. It was silver, yeah, because yeah. the silver, the trim, the trim band is the same. This was the silver dot Metropolitan. All right, what else we got? Uh, let's see. Hmm. This was uh, shortly after that. I've had this Moon Man for a while, and I put... Yeah, so we don't sell this one. No, we don't, sadly. But, but it has a nib that we do sell. Which is the Noodler's Nib Creeper number two, and the moon. this Moon Man is a number five. And I had an Edison number five in, in it for a while, but this number two writes perfectly. It doesn't look like it belongs in here, Brian. Oh, it doesn't at all. <laughs> um, it flexes really well. Yeah, it's the nice and bouncy. It is perfect. Like you can t see that the the nib is way far out from the feet. It doesn't get crushed by the cap or anything like that. Nope. It's just screw it on. It's oh, like, dude, that is close. There. Oh, you are flirting with disaster, my friend. It only works because the machining in the top of that cap is conical oh and my not flat. God. So have you have you accidentally in in, in your endeavor to uh, unnecessarily modify these things? Have you ever like totally jacked something up and ruined it? Yeah, I've got a couple bags of broken pens. <laughs> um, what? I save all the parts though. So. so what would you say if someone wanted to be like, "Ooh, I want to fiddle." Like, what would you what do you think the most easy to fiddle with pens are? Like noodler? Yeah, okay. I was thinking noodlers. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, big time. So for these, nothing special, nothing too crazy, but. This one's got a number six, regular number six nib on it, which is a medium. And then I smooth that one out like crazy. So then the pawn set's got the three channel feet on it. Yes. So, so does the um, the new pen, the triple tail. The triple tail, yeah. And so because of the three channel feet, that thing writes, it just flows like nobody's business. That is actually really cool. If you're looking to just have a pen that may not do flex like Noodler's always does, yeah. but you want something that is always going to flow well, then a pawn set and the triple tail have a feed really unlike anything else because it's got a double link channel. Yeah, and the capacity on that, you could fit. Do you have this eye dropper? Not right now, oh, okay. but you could fit you know, like a month's worth of ink in there. <laughs> With a normal nib, you'd be writing for quite a while. And yeah, then, noodlers are probably a good option because they're affordable. If you 
totally destroy them. You know, you're, you know, at a, at a minimum, what the creeper is, you know, in 16. the sub $20 yeah. range. So I would just say that's a probably a good place to start. Yeah, all of them are really great for tinkering with. This one's got another uh, regular stub. This is a 1.5 number six stub in it. And I really like that. And as I say, for, Conrad? Yeah, it's a Conrad. He's that for Christmas cards this year. Oh, nice. So we have green or red in here? Green. Nice. Green pen, green ink. Perfect. Do you always match your pens and your ink? I didn't when I started, but now that I have uh, a lot of access to ink, yes, I, you do. I tend to uh, match a lot more. So you have like an olive in here. What is this? That's Snoogler's Army Green. Oh, that's a good one. But that's a really good one. While, so it's good. Yeah, it's a little dark right now. And then this one. This one is a disaster. So this is the uh, a Nib Creeper with an Edison 1.1 stub in it, and. This wait, wait, that's a nib creeper, which is a number two size nib, and you've shoved a number five in there? Oh, yeah, it doesn't fit. Oh, my. Um, How, do, like, is it, it, is it, is it ever yeah. going to come out? Oh, yeah, it'll, it'll come out. It, in fact, it came out right into the bottle one time. Oh, God. Um, oh, was that that time yeah. you asked for a... Uh, Magnet. Ma <laughs> yeah. So, it kind of fits, but because it's so wide, the nib just kind of, like, goes, like, oh, if you put too much pressure on it, it just goes, nope, not going to write. And oh, it gosh. Turns, nope, not going to write. So, you have to sit there and just... Crank it down, which is why I always have ink on my hands. <laughs> he this does. This one's fun too. This one dried out completely. I see that um, there has been some oh, yeah. some damage in here it's on the inside of the base state concord. Ink. Yeah, base state. That'll do it. You you're a big proponent of having base state pens, aren't you? Oh yeah, I I love the ink because it's super permanent and it flows really well. Um, it's it's a fun ink too because the colors are just so vibrant. And yeah, you you generally have at least one or two pens inked up with a base date ink at all times. Yep. I so what would you say as far as if someone is curious about the base date line of inks, but apprehensive about well, you know, I'd I'd like to see what all the fuss is about, but also I've heard that it can mess up your pens. Like, what what would you say to them? I would say you have to be prepared to either thoroughly clean your pen or never clean the pen. Worth it though. Oh yeah. Really? Time. Yeah, because the like I have a Twisby Eco with the base date blue in it. It's the only ink that lives in that pen. And it writes every time. I won't write with it for a week or two. Open the cap, boom. Every time. No lasting damage, though, nope, right? Not at all. Well, there you go. Yeah. Nice. What's What's one hack that you've always wanted to do but haven't yet done? Um, I'm working on somehow to fit the Pilot Vanishing Point nib unit into an existing pen. That's right, because you yeah. came across that that like semi damaged your mm -hmm. you know alone nib unit. You're like, I need to make a pen out of this. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I look at all these, and I'm like, which one of these can I just bore out to fit the nib unit in? And it's gonna be it's gonna be a task. I already drilled ah. out a couple pieces of wood for it, but. Were you using wood? I I'm thinking about it because I don't have, I'm not gonna like drill through an aluminum block to turn to make a. <laughs> Something fit on a pen. It's probably gonna end up in, in a Noodler's pen because I can. You're gonna put a vanishing point in oh, a yeah. Noodler's pen? Yeah, I tried to put it in a shark body, but it didn't work. Oh my god! Which would have been great. You're putting like a, a, a you know what like a eighty dollar nib unit? Yeah. In a, into like a, a dollar pen. five dollar pen. Yeah. <laughs> that I really want to see that, and I'm sure that we might need to revisit that one to see what else you can yeah, do. Yeah. Once I finally get it done, this is a fun one that made Jessica uh, scream. Um. <laughs> I put the platinum carbon desk pen in the metropolitan body. And this is great for two reasons. Number one, because you can. <laughs> uh, number two is because if you ever want to put this in your pocket or in your bag and go out of the house with it, it doesn't have like a giant wizard wand does, tail does... on it. <laughs> <laughs> so this, the caps don't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks horrible, but it's functional. <laughs> well, you get out of your house then. There you have it. it well, the cap works fine. So oh, the, the metro cap doesn't work, oh, but oh, this oh. one, yeah, it's just kind of friction fit on there. Wow, dude. Yeah. Wow, fine. that is exciting. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up, but this is this has been absolutely fascinating. I guess I it, it should go without saying, but. Doing any of this, anything similar to this, is absolutely going to void warranties and all right. that stuff. So do it at your own risk. But it can have its benefits and its rewards. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. You get to tinker with things. You get ink on your hands. You get to uh, brag about it, too. So. There you go. It's been fun. Well, Brian, we might need to revisit this because I definitely want to hear about what you can do with that Vanishing Point nib because oh, yeah. that's pretty fascinating. So we'll hold you to that. 
For you out there, I would love to know if you've done anything wild or crazy with your pentons or if you've ever been curious about something, you know, apart from the standard nib swapping. But other than that, have a great day. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Drew. Other Brian, for joining me. So I was not Brianless today. And right on.